Hello everyone. Today we are going to be tying the GTH variant. And some of the materials that are in the GTH variant. For a hook, we are going to be using the FW501 size 10 Arex hooks. For the tag, we're going to be using Mirage Tinsel Medium. For a body, we'll be using Wine Ultra Thread. For a wing, we'll be using Calf Body Hair. And for a tail, we will be using the same. Then we'll be using Hackle, some Grizzly Hackle, and some brown hackle. For thread, we'll be using a six aught black to start with. So we'll put the Arex hook in the vise. Make sure that your hook will line up with the top of the vise so that when you do a rotary, it will stay in line and not wobble all over the place. So we'll start the thread on the hook, start it at the front, and we'll just snip that off. And then we will dress the hook. Back to the back, then come back again over that to the front. I like to leave just a little bit of room from the eye of the hook to the thread. That way you can tie your wing in there and have lots of room for the hackle at front at the front. So we'll just snip off a piece of body hair. Now, when you take that off, you're going to get a lot of fluff going and it's going to go everywhere and it's going to get stuck. So the best thing you can do is to get a little spray can of the static guard and spray your fur or hair or whatever you're doing that's going to be a lot of static in it. Then you want to take and cut it off, bring it up and get remove all of the fluff in there. Now on the hair you're going to have guard hairs that will go, I like to go with a, like a one, two, three, four, five, six length. So you want to keep the one and the two lengths. So that are going to be the longer lengths in there. So you want to just pinch that with your fingers, take the fluff there and peel that out and then put it into your garbage bin. So just keep pulling that out until you don't have any more that you can pull out of there. Then you want to take that and put it out in your hair stacker. Now, if you don't have enough in there, you can just set that to one side like, easily. Pick up another piece of hair and do the exact same thing with that again. So just pick it up. Pinch it there again. Pull out the fluff, the short ones. So that'll be the three, four, five, six, seven, eight lengths. Then you're going to remain another little strip. Put that with the other one. So then you've got two pieces there. Pinch that together. Put that into your hair stacker. And when you're putting it in your hair stacker, go around, around, around your hair stacker so that you get all the fibers in there. Push it down in there. Then take and just hit it on something that's solid. That will pack it down. And it'll be all packed down in there. Now, when you pull this out from the base of it, you want to make sure that when you pull it out, the points are going to be going the way that you're going to be put them onto the hook. So with the wing, the points are going to be going this way. The tail, the points are going to be going the other way. So you just pull that out. And there's your points are going to be right here. Just take your points, pull that out. And then you can pinch that tight and if there's any more 
little loose fibers there, you can pull those out. Take that up, measure the wing. Now the wing will be the length of the hook. So you take that. Now when you go to tie your wing onto the hook, don't tie it right at the top. Put it on the side, take a very light turn where you want to tie that on. Take another light turn, but a little stiffer then. Tighten it up, and that hair then will turn right up and be on the top of the hook. If you put it on the top of the hook, and you go to put it on, it's going to turn to the one side of the hook. So you want that to be right at the very top. So put a few turns in. Then you want to take and cut that remainder of that off. And cut it on an angle. Don't cut it straight off. You want that on an angle because you want to be able to then take and run your tying thread to the back and go over that. Run to the front again, fold this wing up and take a couple of turns around the base. Not too many right now, so it still sticks out to the front. If you do too many and it sticks up, it's gonna get in the road. So then you pull it to the back then I normally will undo the cam lock, pull the hook up a little bit into the vise, and you want to take the opal uh, mirage tinsel, and both sides of that is going to be the same, so it doesn't really matter which way you put on there, it looks the same both ways. So again, put it on the side of the hook pointing down, a couple of light turns, and it'll pull right up to the very top of the hook again. And I normally will tie it on so it's right in behind the wing. You want to build that up a little bit so you don't have the, a big bump there. So then I would just take that back, down the curvature of the hook a little bit, then back up, take and do a half hitch, take your thread back to the cradle, unlock lock your vise, and just slowly turn that around making sure that you don't catch the point of your hook with the tinsel because if you do it's going to catch that and break it and I will normally go down a couple of turns go back and forth a little bit just to build that up give it a nice thick area back up lock the vise in grab your thread from the cradle bring it back now you can wrap that or you can actually turn by holding your mirage and turn your thread in your finger. It'll do a wrap on there and hold that. Or you can just take and hold it and go over and tie it on that way. I just find with holding it the other way, if you catch on to that with your automatic bobbin, it works pretty good doing it that way. So then take, move your thread of the road, nip that off, keep the remainder for your next fly, flatten that down, take your thread then, come back. So there's about a good eighth of an inch of uh, opal mirage sitting there. Then you want to tie in your tail. So again, take a nice clump of, of uh, body hair calf body hair, cut that off, clean that fluff out of there again, so you want to take that stuff out, because if you don't take that out and you tie that on, it's going to create a bump that is going to be really bad on your body because it's going to build it up so big that the fly is going to look distorted. So again, put it into your Hair stacker, go around the circle, make sure all the fibers are in there, push it down, hit it on something solid. Bring it back. Now this you want to take it out so the tips are pointing to the end of the hook. There they are there, nice and even. Pull those out. And you want the tail to be pretty much the length of the hook again. Going back. Now, before you tie that on and have to cut it off, I like to cut that off before 
I tie it on because then you don't have to worry about all this here excess on there to cut off afterwards. It just makes it a little neater to tie. So just cut that off, set it up there, a couple of light turns over that right in behind the wing where it, where it ended. Oh, got the thread on the end of the hook, which you don't want to do. So just keep lifting that up until you can see the end where you've got still got an eighth of an inch there. Build that up. Now you want to come back and go underneath the tail and bring it back up right underneath the tail. So underneath, bring it back up. Make sure you don't catch the opal. Do about three to four turns in there. And what that does, it just kind of makes it, the tail goes up and it doesn't flop down and it hides all the opal that you just put on there. So then you come back up this way. You want to take, go on the front of the wing. And now you want to split that wing. So you want to split that wing in half. So take your bobkin, go in there, move your vise just a little bit so you can get a good half of that one side and half on the other. Grab it. And then you want to do a figure eight in there. Do another figure eight. So then when you get the wings up, then you can go around the wing, do the far wing first. And then come back to the back side and what that does, it'll actually pull the wing up. And then you do the wing towards you then, go around the wing and come back in between again to the far side. And then that will take that up and nice and flat. That gives some nice wings there then. It keeps them apart. So then you wanna just take and build up a nice body in here so you don't have ups and downs big bumps here and there you want a nice smooth body take and put a half hitch in there and take that to the cradle and then you take your wine thread and I will just use a normal bobbin for that because you will have different threads and stuff that you use, but it's just like a, a piece of uh, body material that you want to tie on. So rather than use an automatic bobbin on that, I would just use a normal bobbin to hold the thread and it makes it nice and smooth when it goes on. So take it back to the regular black, to back to the bobbin holder, snip the excess of wine off there. And then you can undo and whip that on by your rotary. And it would go all the way to the end first. Get that right to the very end. And then come back with it. And then as you come back, try to build it up just a little bit right in behind the wing there. So it kind of gives it a little bit of a body uh, slope to the tail. Just looks a little realistic, a little more realistic to what a normal bug would look like. Okay, take your black thread back, tie off the wine thread from there. Now you can use floss too if you wanted to. I just find the thread is more is stronger than what uh, uh, floss would be. Cut that off. Now you want to take and dub on some peacock 
uh, ice tub. Now the Peacock ice tub, I just have it in containers like this. Keeps it uh, together. And then you can just pull it out from the end of the, the holder, the little box. Now the ice tub is somewhat tricky to uh, uh, dub on because it is uh, synthetic, so it's not apt to grab onto the thread as much as it would if it was just a, a natural. So I just put a little bit of wax onto the end, stick this over to the cradle, and then I'll do it. And then actually I'll take this here and straighten it out so that it pulls the fiber straight. And then you can start to, to dub that on. And it doesn't take long before it'll catch and uh, start to come on. And you don't need too much. That's probably good enough there. Pull off the excess. Hold the, the uh, thread in your fingers here. Undo that from the cradle. And then start to put that around the fly right at the back of the wing. Now you're going to get some excess dub there. So once you get that onto the fly, take and just go with your scissors, do a little bit of trimming, any long fibers there. You don't want that looking too too uh, fragile there right away. The fish is going to do that with a few uh, catches on there, but you want to be able to have it looking fairly decent when you put it on there. So I just normally will take, clean that off, any long fibers that's on there. And that cleans that up pretty nice. There. So that just has a little bit of the Peacock ice tub in behind the wing. Then you want to take and put your hackle on. So with the hackle, I normally would take and clean off the ends. So you got a bit of a stem there. And put the stem with the dull side towards you, but push it down on the side of the hook towards you. Push it on an angle down. Don't put it flat. And that just locks it in there that it makes it that when you start to turn this around, those fibers are going to be for, formed going this way on the fly. Which you want it when it lands on the water, you need that uh, of, um, towards uh, the front. So it makes it looks like a natural uh, uh, movement of the fly on the water. If you do it the other way, it kind of puts it into the water and it doesn't look as good. So I always like to have it that way. Then tie the brown hackle in the same way. Just come in front, tie that in the front with the stems again. And once you get that done, just take and trim off any excess length of the stems. Get those out of the road. There. Do another half hitch. Put it back to the cradle. And I will do the grizzly first. Do two turns behind the wing. And then come in front of the wing. You want to do two turns there. Now you can take and use your vise and do the turns as well with it. And it works well that way. Go to the front, lock it in, bring your thread back, tie that off. But what you do not want to do is you don't want to cut those, that hackle off right now, you want to let it sit there. <clears throat> then if you get a half hitch tool you can take do a half hitch go over the end right now 
put that back that locks that back in again over the cradle then you can take and start running the brown again i do one with this behind the wing and then go in front do one there and then once you get that on there now if you notice where that ha uh, grizzly hackle is I am going in the back side of that grizzly and if you leave that grizzly there it acts so that it doesn't go all the way up to the eye of the hook and it starts to crowd the eye then so that way it's behind the grizzly builds it up there and then you can take lock that off again half hitch over the end, oh, got the hackle tied up in there. There we go. Okay, now once you got that up there, you can just kind of wiggle a little bit with your fingernail, make sure it's tight in there and behind the eye of the hook. And then you can take and cut the hackle off. Now with cutting the hackle off, I don't cut it. I will take my scissors and you take your scissors so that you just have them open like that. You push it in there to the feather and it'll just break the feather off then. Like that. Otherwise you end up cutting the barbs that you just put on there with the hackle, which you definitely don't want to do. Now, once you get that done, do another half hitch. That will take all the fibers and should put them back beyond the eye of the hook. Then you can take whip finisher, go in there to the eye, do about four turns, should be good. And I normally will put my fingernail in there just to give it a, make sure that it's good and tight. Now, before you go and cut your thread off with the automatic bobbin, always make sure you pull a little bit out, put that cap back on, and then cut your thread. And again, I don't cut it. I just go in with my scissors and break it off that way, and then put that around your post. If you do that, very rarely will you get to the point where you forget, you cut it, you set your bobbin down, and then you have to put all the tension back on it again. So once that's like that, you can just go around and kind of trim off any little fibers that might be a little too long on there. Just pretty it up. It's more for you than the fish. Then when you're done, a little bit of head cement. A little head cement on the very front. And I will also do some head cement on the body and that will just give it a little bit of a shine on the body part and a little durability as well. So just go over that. And that is the G A GTH variant. And that is a really good fly for any type of trout. Uh, they just love this. Thank you.